Hello, everyone. This is the week of the bills that I'm going to talk about was doing the week of March the 1st, 2021. We're like doing them like a week behind so that we can make sure we cover everything. We're trying to keep you updated on what's happening in the legislative session and everything else that's happening around the community. I am sure you're watching all of the news media outlets, but this is just an additional informational tool so that you can talk to me or I can talk to you, of course. So we had Senate Bill 7, this bill establishing a time frame to sue a manufacturer for unsafe or defective products. So they're putting a cap, really, saying that if you don't sue within 15 years, then the statute of limitations runs out. So they put in where you're able to bring a suit within that 15 years of the sale or lease of the product. So that was Senate Bill 7. Also, I want to say up front as well, you can go to senate.mo.gov slash M-E-M-04, and it'll take you to my Senate page. So it's Senate, S-E-N-A-T-E, dot M-O, dot G-O-V, M-E-M-04. So that'll take you to my Senate page. That way you can see all of these reports. You can listen to the audio podcast as well. And if you go out there, you can also listen to some of the Senate live debate that happened that week. So some people say it's a little boring, but if you're interested, it's good information. Two of my bills that made it out of committee that I'm very proud of is heading to the Senate floor. We're talking about Senate Bill 5-7. This creates the Economic Distress Zone Fund to support uh, nonprofits working to combat crime in troubled areas. So it's a bill that we're working on to try to get some assistance in these troubled areas. Senate Bill 318, this was approved by the Senate General Laws Committee, and it seeks to crack down on the theft of illegally obtained scrap metal and copper catalytic converters and havoc components. So we're trying to cut down or stop the theft of havoc components, especially when we're doing rehabbing and construction in certain areas. And also, they're really stealing the catalytic converters off of individuals' cars. So we want to stop the theft of those by those individuals. So Senate Bill 318 will do that. Senate Bill 317 was in the Senate's Transportation Infrastructure and Public Safety Committee. We introduced this bill into the hearing regarding the suspension of businesses and occupational licenses, a professional license, for individuals not complying with child support. So what we're trying to do with that bill, Senate Bill 317, is give an individual due process. So before you get your occupational or business license or professional license suspended, we've put some things into law that that the court can take a look at before it just makes a decision based on non-payment. So that's a bill we're excited about. We're hoping to get it through the process. Senate Bill 323, which allows school districts to offer elective, what I call the Bible bill. It's Senate Bill 323. This bill allows school districts to offer an elective in social studies courses, Hebrew scriptures, and the New Testament. That's an interesting bill. We haven't had any really controversial on the bill, but let me know what you think. You can always Always go to my Senate page to let me know what you think. Also, Senate Bill 488. You know, I think I talked about this before. We have two bills, what we're doing here. We're establishing some funds that's going to help in the community combat some different things. Senate Bill 551, this creates the mental health programs for law enforcement officers. We're working that bill through the process as well. Now, we had some bills that came through the Judiciary Committee. Senate Bill 295, it creates a Missouri statutory thresholds for Settlements Involving Minors Act. Current law requires court approval for settlement agreements involving minors regardless of the settlement amount. Under Senate Bill 295, settlements involving minors may be agreed to without court approval if certain conditions are met and if the settlement is no more than $25,000. Supporters argue this change will promote efficiencies in settlement processes and empowers parents and decision makers involving their children. I don't remember any major opposition to that bill. Senate Bill 169 came through as well. This bill states that a food or merchandise container will not be considered misleading or unfairly marketed if it is filled to less than capacity for reasons like product protection, product selling, and others. So basically, you know how right now, let's talk about this one. Right now, when you pick up a bag of 
potato chips. You know it's filled with air and it doesn't have a lot of potato chips in it. Anything basically right now you're picking up in the stores, they filled it mostly with air. So this bill is trying to say that it's not considered misleading or unfairly marketed. So this bill is an attempt to prevent people from suing because of companies not putting that much product in there. Now, I'm not saying I like this bill because I don't, but, you know, I think we should let the court process work. And if people feel like they have an issue, they have a remedy through the courts. And I don't think we should prevent them from exercising that remedy. So we also had the Rules Committee. We had a concurrent resolution five that came through there. This one is strongly urging Congress to propose the state powers amendment to the U.S. Constitution in order for states to repeal federal laws and regulations. I think this bill is really in violation of, you know, the United States invoking state powers. I'm sure you've heard a lot of this legislation around the United States. We also have Senate concurrent resolution six. This one urges Congress to resist any attempt to increase the number of justices on the United States Supreme Court. I think there has been some talk in the federal government about increasing members of the Supreme Court. I don't know if they've come to a decision or not, but we do have a resolution in the Senate. Okay, so the Commerce Committee has several bills as well. So let's see, we had Senate Bill 230, which prevents political subdivisions from restricting utility service based on the type of service of the energy being delivered. That should be an interesting bill. Senate Bill 178 modifies provisions relating to net metering, a billing practice that allows consumers who generate some or all of their own electricity to use that electricity anytime instead of when it's generated. We'll have some continued discussions in reference to Senate Bill 178. Senate Bill 334 deals with the service territories of retail electric service providers. And with that, I want to say the Appropriations Committee is still going through the process. We've heard the Department of Economic Development, Department of Natural Resources, and the Department of Conservation, and Department of Commerce and Insurance. And if you want to know about these appropriations bills or these budget bills and what's in them, you can go to the Missouri Office of Administration website and click on budget up there, and then it'll say 2022 budget. And then you can click on where it says Governor recommendations and it'll list every department's budget and it has a table of contents so you can go to that table of contents it'll tell you the funds that are being allocated it'll tell you the governor's request for each one of those departments so that way you'll be updated on where your taxpayers dollars are going for Missouri with that I just want to say thanks for listening you've been listening to state senator Carla May for senatorial district Just giving you some updates, some simple updates on some bills that came through session during the week of March 1st, 2021. Look forward to talking to you next week.